Hi, my name is Joe Altspeter, and this is the video abstract for All Optical Switching of Photonic Entanglement, which is a paper which describes some work done by Matt Hall, myself, and Prem Kumar at Northwestern University's Center for Photonic Communication and Computing. Uh, this paper describes our efforts to make a networked quantum switch. Uh, one of the things we do here at the uh, Quantum Communications Lab is make sources of polarization entangled photon pairs, and a lot of the applications we envision for those sources are networked instead of point to point. If you want to make a networked application, instead of a point-to-point -point application, you need a switch that can direct input photons to one of many destinations. And the requirements for a quantum switch are quite a bit different than the requirements for a classical switch. A quantum switch needs to be low loss, it needs to be fast, high contrast, it can't change the quantum state that you're switching, and it has to generate no extra noise photons that can drown out whatever quantum signal you happen to be sending wherever you're sending it. If we look at what type of switches already exist, we can see that they fall into two main categories. There are switches that are both high speed and high noise, or there are switches that have very low noise but are very low speed. And what we'd like to do is make a switch that is both high speed and low noise in this area down here. If we look at how this switch looks on the table, it's made of a fiber polarization controller, a fiber spool made of standard single mode fiber, and a black box that contains a pair of wavelength division multiplexers, a circulator, and a 50-50 fiber coupler. If you look at the diagram, you can see that the switch is actually a Sagnac loop made into a nonlinear optical loop mirror, or NOM. How this works is that an input signal, if you tune the FPC correctly, will always be completely transmitted. The way that happens is because of constructive interference between the clockwise and counterclockwise paths between the input signal. If we instead multiplex in a strong pump such that it makes a cross curve phase shift on just the clockwise path, we can turn constructive interference into destructive interference and cause all of the light to be reflected instead of transmitted. To determine the switching window, we pay attention to the timing between the signal and the pump. If the signal lags the pump, then they never overlap and you don't get any switching. If the signal passes completely through the pump, then you get nice uniform switching because of a nice uniform phase shift. If the signal arrives before the pump, you once again don't get any switching, which makes the switching window dependent on the length of the Sagnac interferometer. If we want to measure the switching contrast or the switching window, we can look at the transmitted power, which is shown on this oscilloscope trace here. Right now, everything's totally transmitted. If we turn off the pump power, then the pulse disappears. And if we turn the pump power back on, then the pulse re-emerges as we switch from total transmission to reflection and back again. To measure the switching window, we use a variable delay to change the timing difference between the pump and the signal. Because we use a C-band pump to switch an O-band signal, the large anti-Stokes detuning makes sure that we don't get any Raman noise photons and our switch is very clean. If we compare it to other existing switches, we can see that it's 30 dB better in terms of aggregate speed and noise than the best existing device. To demonstrate how this would work in an actual quantum network, we created a dual channel entangled photon stream. To create that, we use one maximally entangled state, HH plus VV, in parallel with another maximally entangled state, HH minus VV, 300 picoseconds away, such that if you measured them both, you get a mixed, partially entangled state. But if you switch out just the first one, we can recover the maximal entanglement of that first quantum channel. Taken as a whole, we think this switch's performance makes it an exciting, enabling technology for quantum information and quantum communications. We appreciate having had the chance to tell you a little bit about it. Thanks.